Welcome, 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 welcome to the podcast. Yay! <laughs> welcome to another episode of the All Star Podcast. I'm Katie Ray. I'm Dr. King. And today we've got very special things for you. But before we get into that, we will um, discuss veterinary medicine, business. All Star as a business, other business things. We'll watch some funny clips. You guys will get to watch them with us and see our genuine reactions. We'll explain them um, for the, those of you that are listening. And then, what was I saying? Audience questions. Audience questions. questions. Audience questions. So we'll answer any of the questions that you guys have. So send us your questions to asvcpodcast at gmail.com. Comment below on Facebook. You can also send a, me- uh, send a message on Facebook. Send us a message on Instagram. Um, Please send in your questions. Send your questions. They can be anything. We've got some amazing questions. Yeah, amazing questions. So keep them coming. We need veterinary medicine questions. We need personal questions. We need your questions. We are on all podcast services. All podcast services. Where are we? iTunes. iTunes. And? Spotify. 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 Google Podcasts. Google Podcasts. You can watch the video video cast on Facebook and YouTube. The video cast is on Facebook and the YouTubes. Check us out. Check us out. Okay. That's it. So. Without further ado. Without further ado, we have a special guest for you today. This is our first special guest. Our very first special like guest. That first... doesn't work here. That doesn't work here. Right. Because we've had APC a couple times for her our behavior questions. But yes. otherwise, today's special guest is Eric with a K. Eric with a K. Come on in, Eric. Come on down, Eric with a K. <laughs> Who is this a handsome gentleman, you might ask? This is my husband, Eric. Yes. E-R-I-K. Is it weird that I'm taller than the TV? No, it's okay. No. So this is Eric. Eric, tell us a little about yourself. Hello, I'm Eric. He's the light of my life. Um, (laughs) I'm the light of her life. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you want to know? Like what I do for a living? Yeah. 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 Um, Sales manager at IKEA. Yay. uh, In charge of like six departments. And they are. Yeah. Uh, kitchens, um, cooking, eating, bath, uh, dining, and possibly some more. But okay. that's how it is for now. So yeah, if you need basically anything IKEA related, he's your guy. Yeah, I have uh, lots and lots of obscure IKEA knowledge. He also <laughs> is um, <laughs> several days a week. He acts as the duty manager, Ooh. which is a just a fun way to say duty manager. You know, like that's actually what they call it. That's real. Yeah. Something. Duty. So he's in charge of the entire store for yeah. a couple days a week. Oh. But they call it the duty manager. Yeah. Why? Who knows? Um, Who knows? We have. Well, I'll give you. I'll give you background on this, and it's like a like a weird little IKEA fact for people that are interested in such. But um, so like three different shifts per day. Um, so if you are opening, then obviously you're checking for like the security of the store, making sure that um, there's not like power equipment moving in areas that could hurt people. And, yes. Um, to do. Yeah. Um, the middle of the day person uh, is usually just kind of outlining sales and allocation of people. Uh, and then the closing person is like, hey, is anybody hiding in our store? Uh, <laughs> Sleeping <laughs> in the bed. Yeah. Uh, which happens multiple times. Oh, my um, gosh. That, that was a thing for a while. Um, that was a, a YouTube thing. Um, people oh, hiding in closets or trying to spend the night at Ikea, um, you know, which... Mm-hmm. Every once Can in a while. actually check every closet, every drawer that you guys have? Yeah, we check li- literally everything. everything. Yeah. Oh, my God. But what about the warehouse? It's ginormous. Yeah. That was the thing, too, for a while. Um, GoPros uh, scaling our racking. What? Um, which sounds like a good idea. And, like, when I was in high school, I would, you know, my thought process would yeah. be like, yeah, that seems like fun. Um, <laughs> How do you get down? You know? And now I think, like, okay, so what happens if they shift a pallet, like, 50 feet up, and then that falls and hurts somebody? Yeah. And oh, yeah. it's like a giant liability for us. So Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, you know, previously 18-year-old fun Eric, and now it's just like worried about liability and getting sued, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, adults. Yeah. You know what? Oh, the things Adult. we have to worry about. Yeah. yeah. That's adulting. But. Ooh, for sure. So a little bit of background about Eric and I. We got married March 24th, twenty. 20- 17 yeah it's been two years we just two years of bliss anniversary yeah um so still compared to some of uh the world we're still technically new newlyweds or something along those lines but um i don't know i feel like we took this thing to 100 like really quick i don't i don't don't feel like do you want to share that story what how we got married oh i mean i can 
Would you like me to talk through? Let's see. Let's hear both sides. <laughs> okay. Let's 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 talk about it. Um, we can talk about it. We can talk about it. Um, so we. It's a fun story. Uh, yeah, we got engaged in uh, I think it was like March eighth. Yep. Uh, so, Twenty seventeen. <laughs> yeah. First test. Seriously. Box check. That was okay. good. <laughs> I didn't even have to check my Did notes catch- section of my phone for that date. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so we got engaged in Mexico. Um, and I would say like what two weeks after being back um, <clears throat> remember this I think you text me at I work remember this yeah I literally texted yeah it was like a Wednesday and it was like uh, I got a text from her that said hey do you want to get married on Friday, Friday? <laughs> right. uh, and I was like sure <laughs> And I came She's in like, on Friday and I was like, yo, I'm getting married tonight. <laughs> uh, and then we, I think we, we called our moms and we're yeah. like, hey, what are you doing on Friday? You, your mom had Friday off yeah. and my mom's retired, so she has every Friday off. Yeah. Um, and they met us at the courthouse and at four awesome. o'clock and paid $100 cash, which was oddly specific they of them to specific. request <laughs> it in cash. cash. Um, and then, yeah, we told them we weren't cousins right. and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I knew you he had was to check that box. He was going to do Yeah, the they, they, they physically ask. Like, yeah. and then you laugh it off like it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. Um, like, somebody, like, at some part of their job being like, hey, you guys aren't cousins, right? Uh, and no, they were like, seriously, though, are you guys cousins? It was, like, <laughs> it was like, are you guys cousins? We're like, no. Like, of course we're not cousins. Right. They're like, great. Are you drunk? And we're like, no. No. And oh, I like, forgot about the drunk part. Are you related? Yeah. Uh, no, still not related. Are yeah. you under the influence of anything? No. Are you guys family? No. no. Like still not. <laughs> like still not. Well, I, and and sometimes I wonder if that was like. Uh it was just, it was very, it was odd than like the list of questions that they had um, because they, you could tell that they were going in order. Uh, and, and if they were going in order, then they had multiple things repeated in yeah. that list to like see if somebody so could, would slip yeah. up. Oh, yeah, that slip was going to be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I'm sure you're not drunk. Got, sure you're not cousins. I probably get some people. So, yeah. That's um, like I knew that he was going to give the short version of that story. Yes. Well, let's say Richie's parents' names are both king. So, could you imagine them going to the courthouse and being like, no, I swear we're not cousins <laughs> or family or anything? We're but not last, related. Both last names are king. Well, are you sure you're not family? Well, I think it used to be a thing <laughs> where you would have to get one, like a word. blood test. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you don't, I don't, you don't have to do that no, anymore. No, I mean, we didn't. So. They just yeah. ask you twice. I think that's the this furthest the as far as they're gonna cousins go. Cousins related family. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. But okay, so the I knew that he was gonna get the quick version of that. Let's back up real quick. So <laughs> the reason that we decided to do that, there's a couple different reasons. Um one of the main reasons is because we could either spend money on a wedding or spend money on a house. Yeah. So we decided to buy a house instead. Yeah. The fiscally yes. responsible version of the f- yes. Yeah, so we knew that we weren't going to spend money on a big wedding, and I knew um, courthouse you have to do Monday through Friday, and my mom has Fridays off, so we it had to be a Friday. And I just basically, you know, being a woman, was like, ah, I just want to at least wait till I have like an engagement ring to get married, um, and then. Eric's mother so graciously gave him um, her her mom's diamonds to put in a ring to have made for me. That's so cool. So yeah. he kept leading me, giving me misinformation, misinformation, misinformation. Yeah, it was oh, the, only type of, measure... the only type of information is misinformation. Yeah. So he, <laughs> he was telling me, like, oh, they're going to have to design. The design's not going to be done until, meanwhile, this is March, right? The design's not going to be done until April, and then they're going to have to do something with it that will be done in May. And then such and such isn't going to be done until, like, August, and then it probably won't actually be done until, like, September. So I believed every word of that and was like, yep, it's not coming. As she would, because I'm a trusting husband. Trusting husband. (laughs) So we get to Mexico, and then the last morning that we're there, he proposes. So I, like, reflex, like, smacked him in the chest and was like, oh, yeah, you lied to me, and then said yes, right? So well, you skipped over the part of like physical abuse on that. Hey, um, it was, yeah, that was a relatively lightly. Smack. Yeah, um, that was a pretty. Uh, I'm that pretty, was pretty sure robust. you were fine. So. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We, you were fine. Okay. I think. Tell me, I was fine. No, it's fine. I, there was a handprint on his chest, but in my defense, I just found out that my husband lied to me like 17 times. True. For good. For my own good. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, white lies. You know, you know, just it's not, little white lies. You know? I mean, I, I now looking back, I appreciate the surprise because it really was like super awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, so all right, so we get back from Mexico, and I was all like, "Well, why are we gonna wait? Like, 
We don't need to wait then. That's the point. Right. Because then um, we were coming up to the end of our lease, and I was like, well, if we get married now, I can change my name, and then we don't have to worry about changing my name and all these documents for the house later, and we can, like, all of our money's in one pot, so, like, let's just let's just do it. Why not? Let's just do it. Yeah. So I called the courthouse, and they were like, yeah, we can take you Friday at 4. I was like, perfect. <laughs> it's booking your appointment to get booking married. Booking my appointment to get married. <laughs> that was pretty strange. And uh, it worked out, so got married, and there was, like, I mean, my mom, my dad, my sister, and then Eric's mom, and, and then the two of us. That was it. That was it. 100 bucks, and then we bought a sweet kick ass house in Noblesville. So, yep. worked out. Yeah. For sure. Yep. But it's funny because we didn't then have a honeymoon because we got we got engaged like two weeks before. <laughs> yeah, in Mexico. So, in like, Mexico. Yeah. So then it wouldn't make sense. That worked out. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so past that, uh, we've got two dogs Nala Fred, no kids. And that's basically Eric and I. Yeah, nutshell. Nutshell. We, um, as a like I've mentioned several times, we have started rock climbing, and that's that's literally all. That's our lives. Yeah, we've been doing a lot. I'm sure there's more. There's yeah. To your life than just. <laughs> Is there? Eric's a super good grill master. There you go. He came to me the other day. He was like, "Can you? Can we?" I mean, I feel like I, I, grill master might be a stretch. No. I feel like I, I grill at an adequate level. No. It's you know what I mean? It's like I don't think it's like a... I don't it's think like it's, really good. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't... I'm not are entering using, competitions. Are you using a uh, charcoal grill? Charcoal grill. Yeah. Sweet That's even trickier. Well, Eric, I came on the other day, and Eric was like, uh, you need to have a seat. And I was like, what? And he was like, I need to show you something. And I'm like, what? And he's like, hear me out. I'm like, what? And basically, it was like... This would be super helpful. We would use it all <laughs> oh, yeah, the time. I, remember this now. I didn't know what you were talking about <laughs> at first. Totally, it would be totally worth it. And I I'm do like, that to her a lot. Spit it out. Spit it out. He's like, do you see this $900 grill? It would be super convenient for us because of he had his whole like speech laid out. I did. Why a $900 grill would be like worth it. I immediately was like, no. Well, the reason <laughs> the reason I had to do such things um, is within our first year of marriage, I found out that I had a threshold on things that I could spend. Okay. Um, and tell them why, Eric. So tell like them the why. dollar amount. Yeah. It goes over a dollar yeah. amount. Then yeah, I yeah. have to know about it. Tell, yeah. tell them why. Tell them why. Yeah. Um, so I, I would assume most people will think this is just like me being like a super good husband, but you took it as just about like the worst thing that I could have possibly ever done. So it's not the worst thing that you could have done, but I guarantee you every wife in America would be like, he did what without telling her? Most people would have been grateful, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that. So um, one of the one of the perks about working at IKEA is I, I get a, a decent discount mm -hmm. uh, and I get a discount on top of things that are already discounted. Right. So you can double it's dip like a little a, bit. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty sweet. Win win. Yeah. So we had a um, what I would call inadequate dishwasher perfectly running dishwasher is what um, i would say it was loud, wasn't it? yeah it was it super loud just fine and left some film i mean it was just not it was not a great dishwasher um, it was all right so it did its job it did its job apparently <laughs> Um, so I had the opportunity to purchase a eight to nine hundred dollar dishwasher for like three hundred bucks out the door. Nice. Um, see? Yeah. See what I'm saying? See, here's the problem uh, though. Though I'm Eric, and I, I we have talked about that. Richie, you would have been pissed. Yeah. See, okay, keep going. I'm yeah. on your side. Yeah. Here. Thank this you. Is, yes. I like this. Um, so I feel support from the side of the table, yes. angst from this side, which is fine. <laughs> I've been down this road before with you. Um, but I was like, man, this is going to be super cool. We're going to get a dishwasher. One, it was, um, for the audience panel ready. So, uh, it can be basically concealed to look like a cabinet yeah. when it's ready. So, um, it was a super nice dishwasher. I was like, man, this is going to be great. <laughs> and it wasn't great, uh, because I put it in the back of my car, drove it home, um, and, um, when, and actually that's not even how it went down, like the way you're describing it. Uh, I haven't described anything. Yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll get your version of this and it'll be yes, skewed. I will. Um, <laughs> but she comes in and she goes, uh, what's in the back of your car? Okay. That's exactly what I was um, going to say. That sounds so like you. Yeah. That's why I came home and I was said. like, what is in your trunk? Yeah, right. And. And in my defense, I didn't even try to hide anything of like, so that that's at my place of where I was coming from with this whole dishwasher thing was out of complete love and like, yes. hey, you're going to love this. Hey, I brought you a dishwasher. Yeah. And uh, and then it turned into, uh, what is that dishwasher? Uh, and then immediately, well, how much did you spend on that? And then I was like, I don't know, it was like $310 uh, after tax or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to include tax at that point because 
<laughs> if 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 you start off with two hundred and ninety five and then you <laughs> add thirty seven dollars for tax, yeah. then you know that's gonna be another fight. Yeah. So <laughs> at least go all in when you're gonna right, go. Right. Um so yeah, Ran then it, it off. then it was, you know, um quickly this dishwasher was perfectly fine. Yes. You know, how dare you was. spend our money like this? Um, I never said the words, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, I, I, just in my mind, I just, how dare you? That's how you replay it? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's when I found out that I have a spending threshold. Yeah. Um, and that's what I gave you one. That's what I gave you one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah anybody that's uh, <laughs> jealous of my living situation. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's I, I. I was given. I have now received. We, I have no. now received a a three hundred dollars spending threshold. We did that for both of us, so I can also not spend over three hundred. Okay, so without consulting y- Eric. Yes, but do you ever spend three hundred dollars on anything? Hell no. Okay, so there we go. Actually, that's a lie. Teacher trainings and stuff. Yeah, thousands of dollars. And does anyone say anything about that? Complete support. <laughs> complete support he does have complete support <laughs> yes so maybe maybe when I want to buy a dishwasher just let me buy the dishwasher after you know? the teacher trainings it gives me the opportunity to have like a second job income yeah. and a dishwasher cannot pay us later but it could save you money on energy and water oh thank you so um, <laughs> so to give you to so give you a damn that so, was good I can't even be mad so give you that. a little heads up on the dishwasher that I purchased uh, it actually recycles water no um, and See, now I just look like it D-bag. That, that's where I was going with this. Uh, <laughs> so it actually uses the the like the finishing cycle, stores the water, and then re, you reuses it for the startup cycle. All right. Yeah. So use two and a half gallons of water the entire wash. Oh my word. You know how many you know how many how gallons of water is, it is? Okay. Much, just in the my sink. Side. Here's oh, my side. dishwasher. It probably does work fine, but that's always the. Oh, here's my side of that story. I come home. I, I see think we're dishwasher, good. I think we got the whole. You think? You, you think? Oh, yes. you think we got it? You think, <laughs> think we got it? I think we got you it do. all. I came home. I see a dishwasher in Eric's trunk, and I'm like, I wonder whose dishwasher that is. Better not be ours. <laughs> Walk into the house. Eric, you thought better not be ours? Yeah. <laughs> who would, well, who he's, else constantly, would he's constantly <laughs> helping other people. So. Who else would we have a dishwasher for? In our defense. This was shortly after we had moved into this house, and we had just given, we just given, actually one of our coworkers here, Elise, we'd just given her a set of washer and dryer. Yeah. And so was I good. was like, well, maybe this is an extra dishwasher that he found laying around that he's giving to someone. I don't know, because I couldn't imagine that you would have spent th- uh, hundreds of dollars. You're, do you hear should preface that with th- <laughs> hundreds of dollars? Thou- yeah. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars It's our gold-plated me. dishwasher. <laughs> so... I go inside and I say, Eric, what's in your trunk? And he says, Oh, it's this really awesome dishwasher that I got. And I was like, How much did you how much did you spend on that? And he's like, Oh my gosh, it was only like, you know, three hundred and ten dollars. And I was like, without asking your wife. Well, yeah, it was a really good deal. So a really good deal is a good way to just spend money that we didn't need to because we have a perfectly good running dishwasher. Okay, can I preface this with something really quick? Yes. So this is only <laughs> this I'm making is, me sound like a monster. I know, so but this is only because of what it was. If I'd have shown up with a brand new Mazda CX-9 and I said that I got a really good deal on it, would you be as frustrated with me right now? If it was for you, yes. <laughs> you brought it for me. <laughs> okay. No, yes. so I still would ask. Do we both actively use the dishwasher? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So no, I'd still us. be mad if you brought home so a wait, car I because know the, the car is a bad stayed. financial decision without huh? your wife. The dishwasher stayed. Oh, the dishwasher it stayed, stayed. stayed because that's the later half of my story here. So I tell, I say, Eric, like you made this purchase purchase without your wife, and he's all like, "Well, yeah, it was a really good deal." And yeah. I'm like, "Okay, in the it was future, a great you need to tell me when you're going to make these purchases because I'm upset <laughs> that you made this purchase without me." And he's yes. all like, "I don't understand why. Like, why can't I make my own decisions?" And I was like, "I'm not telling you you can't make your own decisions." But I am. I'm but. telling you that I want to be included on large financial decisions. Okay, I want to yeah. be included. I'm not telling you. And he was basically you can't like, make well, your you own would have said no. While I tell you, you can't make your own decisions. He was like, he was basically like, well, you would have said no, so I didn't ask you. I'm yeah. like, exactly. Like that's why you need to ask me. So uh, at that point, we decided that if it's over three hundred dollars, we have to ask the other person if we can spend it, and uh, depending, you know, depending on what it is. So the dishwasher stayed in his car for like. This is probably day. not good for the mics, by the way. But you. Uh, it's got the, um, uh, that's why it's got the bottom. Oh, there you go. Because I just do that. Because you just consistently hit things. I'm sorry. There have been multiple times already where she'll be like, <laughs> like <laughs> and I'll like have a mini heart attack. I'll be like, no, no, I'll remember that. Okay, cool. Uh, that's good. I never knew that was a thing. I'll stop smacking the table now. Okay, you know. 
Okay. So the dishwasher stayed in his trunk for like a day or two. And then all of a sudden I came home from work and the old dishwasher is now sitting on the back porch. And he's installing the new one. Yeah. Well, come to find out he broke the old one getting it out so we can no longer even give it to someone. We can't sell it. Like, it's just dead. And fun fact, that old dishwasher is still in our... Is it still in our garage? Is it? Shnikes. I was about to say I think it's still in our garage, but I'm not sure now. <laughs> I'm not sure. It might not be. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking if it's probably not. It's probably not now that I think about it, but uh, it stayed in there for a hot minute. So the end of that dishwasher story is that because it's, what do you call the panel? The front panel? Front panel ready? Yes. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, because it's front panel ready, it is made for an Ikea kitchen that we don't have. Which you will be getting next week. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, did you make another yeah, something else to tell you? Did you make another IKEA purchase without my consent? Yeah, it was like it was a little bit more than three hundred dollars this time. <laughs> so anyway, there's no front to it. There's not an actual handle, so you have to like wedge your fingers in the sides to open it, which, which works is, out for the climbing aspect of our uh, yeah grip training. Yeah, so, so it works does out. work on your grip strength, but uh, yeah. no. So I mean, it works fine and it works well, and it's it's been just fine once it was installed and stuff. But the whole process was like a little bit a uh, little bit less. Uh, troublesome than you make it out to be it's a good dish we got a great dishwasher at a great price and you didn't have to worry about any of it and it was installed and um, it's ready for your new kitchen yep which it's kind of like the book it's future you give the it, mouse a it's pancake, future proof or you give the mouse a cookie, cookie. give a mouse a cookie it's that so now that you have a dishwasher that's panel ready next you can get the cabinets that go with it and the next you get the. do you know when that's gonna happen never <laughs> just kidding it's not gonna happen for a while I can't. All you got to do is uh, give me a, you know, one little approval over that three hundred dollars threshold, and that can be done in a weekend. The problem is that you got to pay for all these other things first. You know, more important things like your roof. Your roof. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what the insurance is for. Well, funny you say that. The insurance won't cover it, even though the roofing company that fixed it didn't fix it. Mm. So we're still figuring that out. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, that's where I worry. He's all like, it's just money. And I'm like, yeah, it's just money. Yeah, and guess what you do? You just make more of it. That's and fine. you're like, it's just money. And Richie's like, it's not just money. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, way. goodness gracious. Yeah. All right. What else do we want to know from Eric? You played college football? I did. Yeah. Where'd you play? Arizona State. Arizona State. Okay. That was not our theme song. No. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. What, uh, what'd you, uh, what was your position in football? Um, offensive line. Traveled between multiple positions, but mostly right guard. Cool. Do you know what that is? No. Okay. That's a good start. <laughs> People always ask me, Did oh you my play gosh, husband... all through junior, like all growing up? Um, yeah. Yeah, I started um, super young, um, like junior football league stuff. Um, and then I actually didn't play uh, in middle school. And then I picked it back up in high school. Um, yeah, there's some pretty adorable photos of him in his younger years. Yeah. Where did you play high school? What high school? Uh, Highland High School, okay. which is now not a high school in Anderson. I was going to say it's now it's a right? giant mm-hmm. middle school. Is that the TP? No, that was uh, the Anderson High School. The okay. Indians. Okay. Scots versus Indians. That was yeah. a, that was a rivalry, mm-hmm. and now they're just yeah. one high school. Wow. <laughs> As the town slowly yeah dies. Dies. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And what did you? What was the biggest thing you learned from playing football? Um. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play football. Don't yeah. play football. Well, I mean, it, it's just one of those things that, it, you know, it. I mean, as I as I progress and you, you kind of, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and you think about things that you should do or things that you shouldn't do. Um, lots of concussions. Um, and then you think about, you know, as you progress in the sport, you know, the players get bigger. The players get faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody is just as good as you are. So then you think about like when you play in high school, like the top one percent of the people that you play with. Mm-hmm. Now that's all the people that you play with. Right. Yeah. Um, and then if you're going to the professional level, then the top five percent of all like college talent now plays against you. So then mm-hmm. it's just it's a lot. So I learned more about it being about uh, durability than being about skill. So if you had an adequate amount of skill uh, and your body could handle the stress that it was under, um, then you did really well. 
um, but I unfortunately just kept breaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. it's just kind of one of those things that uh, I always um, – and, you know, I kind of struggle with it now thinking about it uh, in a sense of, you know, like when we have kids, um, you know, I've asked like some people have asked me based off of like, you know, me feeling like I'm 60 at 30 um, and like, are you going to let your kids play? Um, and I don't I don't think I would let them play football. Yeah. Um, now, I str- you know, we, we talked about it like it's str- it's a struggle between like let them do what they want and like, no, this is for your own protection. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. I mean, if they <laughs> if they get to 18 years old and then are, you know willing to make their own decision and like okay then you're <laughs> good okay. luck good luck playing it now sure. uh, but uh, it's just one of those things that you know it's same thing with gymnastics a lot, a lot of stuff, injuries man. and a lot of injuries that come back later mm-hmm. in life but obviously I mean I learned you know a lot of I would say life lessons from team right. sports and yeah. you know I you know the experience that you have with your friends and um, but They'll, they'll get that from golf, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything, any type yeah. of competition, really. Yeah. I mean, for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you had it could a be bass fishing. college basketball experience yourself. Yeah. Yep. I was never good enough at anything like that to be at college level. Had I started gymnastics earlier, I probably could have been, for sure. Like, almost positive. No, I'm positive. Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, there's so many different levels, too, that you can you know play sports at in the yeah. college level too so mm-hmm. i mean you know that I has just so many different opportunities i started gymnastics available. way too late way too late not by my choice <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no I, I i it was it was a really good experience and i wouldn't you know i don't think i would do anything differently now um but but yeah it's uh it's really hard on you yeah ankles wrists back oh, like yeah. it's that's rough Waking up in the so morning many. now is not fun. Yeah, I'm glad none of my kids played. I mean, they played like flag football. You know, all that stuff's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, yeah. That's yeah. fine. You know, um, but nobody ever wanted to play like high school football or anything like that. So I didn't have to manage that. Didn't have to worry about that. With five boys. Mm-hmm. They all just ran or played basketball. <laughs> so that's good. Easy. Yeah. Um... But I do agree, like yeah. this team sports, I mean, just in general, or any, I mean, I think anything that you're trying to pursue to make yourself better, then you learn yeah. so many different lessons, yep. you know. So, Definitely. And especially, like, with your job where you're managing people, then that's something you can take with you, you know yeah. what I mean, in terms of motivating people, how do you motivate people, you know, yeah. things like that, I think, or, you know. Does, does Ikea, do you feel like Ikea has a culture? Yeah, so that's kind of, I mean, I would say, um, you know, one of the things that, I mean, with the different companies that I've worked for, uh, IKEA is definitely probably the ones that has walked the walk behind the culture piece of it. I think you get to a lot of places and, um, you know, it is a focus to recruit. Um, and it's, hey, we do a lot of, you know, this stuff. We, we really preach culture and we're really about this style of working. Uh, and then, you know, it's kind of the bait and switch. Then you get in there and then it's just like, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, uh, IKEA is, um, is a, a very big culture-based organization, which is kind of cool in a sense that you know, I've been lucky to uh, travel with them, go to other stores um, you know, across the United States, and, um, and then kind of experience that in different stores. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get to see different levels of it depending on uh, the stores that you go to. Mm-hmm. Um, so to give an example, uh, right as we started up, um, so our store didn't open until um, late October, um, but the management team started in June. Um, we started doing a bunch of training, and obviously we had to hire like 300 and some people and do all that stuff. But uh, we got to go to uh, the Columbus, Ohio store, like I would say like three weeks after it opened, uh, which freaked everybody out because three weeks after they opened, we got there on like a Monday morning. Um, after we drove over, it was like maybe 10 a.m., uh, and their entire parking lot was full. Oh. All of their overflow parking was full. Um, and in that store, they have like a ton of like hotels and like a business district that's like mm-hmm. right across the street from it, and people were walking okay. across. Oh, my gosh. Um, and I was like, okay. So, I mean, I, 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 you know, I've had retail experience before, but I've never had like that scale of right. retail of experience Ikea. before. Yeah. Um, uh, and you could tell going to that store that, you know, they had multiple, I would say, 
upper echelon managers that had come from Ikea. Um, so within their management group, it was the culture was alive and thriving. Mm -hmm. um, but then you got to figure out how do you translate that culture yeah. down. down yeah. yeah. So a lot of about a lot of Ikea, we focus on hiring based off of the values, not necessarily hiring based off of somebody's um, you know, skills or, I mean, obviously you have to have like a baseline of qualification or whatever, depending right. on your position that we're hiring you for. But, um, but a lot of our questions are based off of, you know, seeing if they're a right fit for the culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then everything I'd like to kind think of, that we do the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, it's super important, right. To work yeah. with like-minded individuals that find the same things that you find important. Yes. Um, and then it all kind of levels up from there, but to align the core values. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. What's their purpose behind like limiting the number of stores? Um, I so for for us it's and I'll, I'll try not to be on like a IKEA soapbox, but um, it is more about sustainability than it is about anything else. Um, so people will come to us and be like, "Hey, you know, I've been trying to buy this countertop for six weeks. Why don't you have it?" Um, I'm like, well. Um, we have a cap as far as what we consider a sustainable sourcing of material. Mm -hmm. um, and if we get to the point where we cannot sustainably source that material, then we stop making the product for a while. Okay. Um, so we, we have a few different items um, that are like that um, and people get super frustrated. I think it, and, and I think more of you know, our overseas stores or around the, the world source have a, a better view on sustainability and a more, I would say, probably more of a holistic approach to that than the United States does. The United States is very much like, we want it, and we, we want, want it now, now. Right. you know, you we want say. it for a great price. Right. Um, mm. But we get to the point a lot of times with customers who become frustrated with that, but you know, there are amount of stores, um, they don't, we don't finance anything, so everything is just paid for. Um, so that is very more, I mean, it kind of forces you to be more methodical and, mm -hmm. yeah. and about how you, where you're gonna put them and yeah. that, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, it was, um, you know, we've been lucky to be really successful um, in the Fisher's market. Um, I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer when I saw the other locations that they were considering for the store. Yeah. Uh, we bought like land, uh, I think in four or five different locations around the city um, before we ever decided on where we were gonna build. Well. Um, but yeah, I think we. Yeah, I think that's it's like a perfect location because yeah. the interstate's right there, you know what yeah. I mean? Top it's golf cost came in. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Top Golf loves IKEA. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I can see why. Um, but yeah, no, that was. Um, yeah, I think, I think we have a bigger plan for expanding stores in the United States. Uh, obviously, this is a huge, I would say, potential market for us. Sure. Right. I think we have less than fifty in the United States now, um, and um, with our stores overseas, we have a much higher density. People shop uh, IKEA like they shop like a Target or a Walmart right. overseas. So it's. That sounds like my nightmare. Why? Because you can't get in and out of Ikea. It just takes too long. That's untrue. <laughs> it's true. When have you ever you gone? you go in for one thing, and yeah. you're going to look at 40,000 other items. That's true. So unless you have, like, the world's greatest self-discipline, you cannot get in and out. Yeah, but uh, that's still happening at Target and Walmart and everywhere else, too. Yeah. But I, like, I guess that's true. Because I can, I can, maybe not Target, but, like, all the other places, I can, I can get in and out. Yeah. I mean... I think, I think we have positioned it as a slower shopping experience. Obviously, um, so like the first half of our store in the showroom is is more meant for an inspirational process. Yeah. Uh, in a sense of like we're showing. I mean, it's basically like if you went to a Target and everything that they sold was displayed in a room. Right. Yeah. Um, for you to be able to touch, feel, um, experience. <laughs> People try, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's crazy, um, but. You know, in that aspect of it, it's meant to be a slow process. We have a restaurant in the middle, right? right. So you can sit and chill and eat, um, and then gear up to, you know, Shops. fill finish your the cart. last leg of the hike. Yeah, we bought. We went to IKEA in St. Louis when Harrison moved into an apartment down there, and like 
we bought so much stuff that I was like, I really don't know if it's all going to fit in the car. Like, I was yeah. strategically, like, yes. organizing, like, in my head, like, okay, we got, okay, we, we probably got one more box we can fit. And that's it. And it, it did. I mean, we, were you, could you even fit in the car? Were you, like, crammed in the side seat? I'm pretty sure I was holding, like, a chair or something. Yeah, I think I was holding a chair. And then, I mean, like, the board, you know, it's coming all the way yeah. through the front dash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we've done that I enjoyed times. shopping there. I mean, but I can see where I would buy, which is this, the, I mean, clearly the concept i mean i would spend more than i ever intended when i went yeah which is why i try not to go because yeah i, I mean, will do that because i am eric yeah and i would just go i'd be like i do need that you know what i should switch that out oh i should do well this. i always tell yes. people it's the value proposition right so yeah. when you shop at ikea you i mean i mean we have the stuff in our store that everybody already has in their houses right so we have the desks and the chairs or whatever but um so you walk into our store and you see something that is a better version of what you currently have. Right. Um, and you're like, man, those chairs will look way better in my dining room than the ones that I currently have. Right. And then you mentally set a, a threshold for price in your head. Yep. And you're like, all right, well, if it's under 50 bucks, I'll buy them. Right. Uh, and then it's $25. Right. And then you're like, well, I get have to cart. buy six. You know? Why get five? I'm getting right. six. Yeah. Getting six. You know what yeah. happens when, you know, neighbors come over for dinner? Like, right. we have to have these chairs. Yeah. Um, and I see it happen all the time. Um, but on the flip side of that, because it's, um, so inexpensive we get a lot of people that that kind of turn it into oh well if it's if it's inexpensive then it, it must be poor quality right um, which is another uniquely American thing that if yeah. something is super oh, yeah. expensive then it has to be super high quality um, but if it's so not true super inexpensive then it has to be just awful right um, and our stuff I mean we everything that we sell has a year return policy so if it's awful then just bring it back to us so right we don't yeah. care we've been we've people return trash cans like, did it not hold your trash? Like, <laughs> you know, oh it didn't gosh. didn't look good enough to be a trash can in our house. Okay, well. All right. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's funny. Uh, we've got plenty of IKEA furniture. That's pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, I think we've been. Well, I would say selective, right? Because with me working there, um, I would say it would be very easy to just fill our entire house with IKEA furniture. Oh yeah. I would yeah, the so. fact that we don't have more is uh, something I'm proud of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Are you proud of that? <laughs> Are you only proud because we didn't spend money on it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that seems more, uh, more like it. More reasonable. Gosh. No, if we buy anything from IKEA, I want it to be a kitchen, but that's like thousands of dollars still. Yeah. But we have two drawers in our entire kitchen. I am not exaggerating. Two drawers. That's it. Two drawers. Yeah. I'm gonna say it one more time. We only have two drawers. <laughs> Sounds like you want a new Go kitchen. Go home and see how many drawers are in your kitchen. Do we have? T- I thought we had one drawer. No, we have two. They're next to each other. Remember? This one's for the silverware and this one's for the spatulas, and that's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not only are there only two drawers, more. they're very small. Yeah. Yeah, they're that's 15 inch drawers. That is it. So that's why we need IKEA things. Yeah. But also, the problem with the IKEA kitchen that we want to do is that we have this stupid half wall in the middle, and we want to like get rid of the half wall and like open the whole thing up, which is another reason why it would be really expensive. It wouldn't be that expensive. We already have a hammer. You know what I mean? But we have different definitions of what's really expensive. What's <laughs> not? Yes. Yeah. With the comfort level of where you, like, I could spin up to this and still right? be comfortable. Or, right. Um, yeah. I'm like, if it's 100 bucks, I'll do it. You're just like, there's no way that's going to happen. And I'm like, well, then we're not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, I know. I, I want to get back to culture, though, because you asked a good question about that. So what is All Stars culture? Great question. All Stars culture. Um, well, we can, do you want to share our core values that we created? Let's hear it. Because all star core values. Put her on spot. <laughs> are all uh, star. The acronym means, all the, star. Oh, the acronym all star. So it's because we are accommodating. A. Yeah. Loving. L. Loving. The other L. Loyal. Loyal. Yeah. Don't help me. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. The okay. S. I'm just kidding. You can. You can. Uh, uh, is skilled and yeah. knowledgeable. Yeah. And then we have T for timely. The last A is for atmosphere, and then we have reliable. So that goes across the board. We are accommodating, loving, loyal, skilled, timely, create a great atmosphere, and reliable for our each other, mm-hmm. clients, and for the patients. Yep. On yeah. like all all those different levels. So as long as you're taking those values and applying it to literally every part of your job, yeah. then it creates it naturally creates a positive welcoming environment so i would say compared to 
not only some of the other businesses that I have worked at in the past, but also just stories that you hear from other people and stuff. Like we have an at like a pretty good culture here. Like we're pretty good at empowering each other mm-hmm. and uh, not putting each other down. And for the most part, like I mean, and, you know, everybody's got their their issues, but like we get along. Like we all get along, mm-hmm. which I think is a sad thing, but it's tr- like n- businesses don't get along. Like people in their business, like people don't get along. Yeah, well, so the fact a, that we get yeah. along is like that's a that's a big problem I think for a lot of companies like even small all the way to large companies would be unhappiness yeah. you know but part part of that comes from you know I think here at the clinic we have you know what they call like a circle of safety mm-hmm. so that you feel supported mm-hmm. you feel um, confident in your mm-hmm. job duties you feel that you can make decisions mm-hmm. you feel like you can do what is right mm-hmm. so that creates a circle of safety so that then you can perform your job to the best of your ability yes if you were constantly looking over your back or questioning you know um, me as a leader or right. um, you know then creates a, a mm-hmm. you know creates a lot of yeah so, confusion yeah sadness dissatisfaction mm-hmm. What's, um, it's sickness. A, I think it really does affect people's health. Oh, for real, it does. You know, like if yeah. you, yeah. So yeah, we are. I mean, no, like no one ever really calls in here, and we have fun. We have occasional dance parties. We are starting to do fun videos. Like it just, you know, if the employees are happy and having fun, then that carries over to the clients, which carries over to the pets. And if the pets are happy, then the clients are happy, which makes the employees happy. The employees are happy, the pets are happy, the clients. You know, you see yeah. what I mean? Like it just goes. So circle of happiness. It's a circle, circle of happiness. <laughs> that was a Lion King. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but no, it's well, it's interesting to see too because I mean, I, I mean, obviously, I have more experience with you guys than the average person does. But um, yeah, <laughs> I feel like for the most part, everybody is stoked to be here, but. Yeah. It's one of those things too that I think, and I think about how and she'll she'll tell me about like hard days she's had here, um, and I'm just like wow like you know if if I do something at my work like we may lose like a hundred bucks or like a thousand bucks or ten thousand bucks or whatever, um, but the stressfulness of like the life and death aspect mm-hmm. of I don't know that's and and she's really good at managing that stuff and I'm just like over here like <laughs> I mean I sold a couch today you know? <laughs> like. She's like, I saved a life. And I'm like, man, that's awesome. And I'm just. I actually, um, uh, one of my um, team members at the hot room uh, on a very regular basis, every single time I see her, she goes, how many lives did you save today? Yes. And I'm like, um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's good. We don't, I like, I, I wouldn't say that there's life and death emergency situations every day. There's definitely not that much, but yeah. But you're contributing. It's just cool, you know. Right. I think that the and even you're doing it. It's stressful, it may though. Not, it may not be on the top of you understanding that you're doing it, but you're contributing to people's happiness. Oh yeah. So yeah. You know, like even at IKEA, that's happening. We fix but, their foreign body. Their dog's know, breath is better. Like yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways mm-hmm. that you can. It's more than just practicing veterinary medicine. So yeah. yeah. Or it's more than just selling a couch. You know right. what I mean? It's. It, because they're not just dogs and cats. Right. They're family members. So it does make a difference. And I think it so leads true. to... It, it is true. It, it leads to better fulfillment, though, personal fulfillment. If all you're doing is checking boxes every yeah. day. Yeah. You know, that's why you... That's I would assume that's why you do help all those other people, you know, deliver things or do whatever you're doing, you yeah. know, outside of the scope of what your job responsibilities are because that does contribute to someone else's well-being, which yeah. can... It comes back around and contributes to your own well-being. Yep. Right. So, I mean, I think that that's one thing that here at the clinic, anyway, that we focus on because the power that it has in our own lives, but then the power to make a difference in oh other my people's gosh, lives. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, because it's like, I mean, like if you ask anybody for any help here, everybody's quick to say, yeah, absolutely, sure, no problem. And they're like genuinely happy to help. Mm-hmm. Same thing happens if there was an emergency in the middle of the night and some, what, like some, Team member here needed help. Like they could call any one of us, and we would we would be there. Um, you you would not answer the phone. <laughs> She'll sleep through anything, man. That's a hundred percent true. That's so true. true. That's so Whoa. true. That is not true. So not that they wouldn't get help, because I would wake up, I would answer the phone. Are you and kidding? And, or, and, yeah, and then yeah. I'd be like, yo, like you know. Says the guy that has the world's loudest alarm clock, and then continues to just lay there. You know. But he is I don't sleep through everything. 
all the time. <laughs> I sixty percent of the time she sleeps through everything all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to think that when I go to sleep, yeah, and I fall asleep, like when I immediately fall asleep is when I sleep the heaviest. I then tend to wake up throughout the night, and then. So we'll just hope that if somebody needs help, that they call you like maybe three hours in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll just keep that. I'll write that down, so everybody knows that. Okay, like, hey, if you're having, uh, you know, if you're having an emergency, please have it after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> because from nine to midnight, not gonna happen. <sighs> but I'll be, I'll be there for you. It's fine. I'll answer that phone. They're so glad we invited him. She's having, yeah, she's having th second thoughts about this. Okay, Harrison, so what's one of the questions? Uh, audience question. Questions from the audience. Holy okay, shorts. Okay, well, there are um, appointments at two. Yes, I understand. Uh, Sorry. So what, what do you want to do? Well, we can. Let's answer um, a quick question can, and then hit some videos. I don't know. The questions are kind of like deep. Like, have you ever failed? Like, that's one of the questions. And the other one is... Can we all just say yes at the same time to that one? Yeah, and, like, that's what we were laughing about. Like, when was la like today? Like, this morning? Like, yeah. yeah. When do you want Which to failure are you referring to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, Actually, I was just talking about failures last night. So there's that question. And then there's... What would you what was have... It? What do you wish you had known when you started out? Yeah. So that's another, like, longer topic. So, I wish I would have known Eric was going to talk crack, crap about me, and I would have done this. <laughs> See, that's a very strategic. That's I'm a very strategic kidding. play. Now you're making um, because up stories. Now I'll never be invited back. So that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, what if we watch? Uh, just watch the questions. Then we can do the questions next week. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. No audience questions this week because he was our audience question. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Eric. I'll mail my answers in. I love yeah, you most of the time. Yes. Just kidding. I love you. Oh, just kidding. Most of the time. Are you excited to watch these videos? What are we? Is this like a funny video thing? Yeah. Game of Thrones. There's the countdown. Holy really? cannolis! Five days. Are you caught up? No, he doesn't. I don't watch, watch Game of Thrones. Thing. Okay. The first Five episode I ever watched, long. somebody got burned alive, and I couldn't do it after that. Oh, that was in the middle of the season. So. I know that was. Are you ready fault. for Avengers though? Yeah, oh, Avengers gosh, will be legit. I'll watch that. Days. I don't we understand watch the whole Marvel. like. That's that's pretty good. I don't understand though the whole reserve a ticket. Like and a seat, like you have to, you can reserve the actual seat you're gonna sit in, or is it just the ticket? Oh, mom. Oh, mom. That's the thing now. I don't want to get stuck in the front row. Mom, no, you no, you can book your seat, man. Yeah. You can book your seat. No. Usually it's at like main seat. Okay, I was gonna say because Regal doesn't have that. I got my opening tickets, but they're for 11 p.m. <clears throat> Johnny so. wants to go, and I need to take Johnny on. But then he was like, "Well, maybe we'll just go for the weekend." All right, here we go. Ready? All right, so. Well, this. This one. This is our first one. All right, my dog yeah. is super ashamed after peeing on the carpet. We have a house slipper on the floor. With on a paper, like towel. paper towel. Possibly an Ugg. Is it an Ugg boot? Looks like an Ugg boot. Oh. <laughs> well, if you would have started there, it would have been all right. Like daddy. <laughs> <laughs> is dude the bad girl? Oh no, she's really upset. She's she is really upset. So the dog peed in the what looks like a hallway or another room, and then the camera pans up to the dog sitting next to the toilet with its face shoved behind it, and it refuses to turn around. <laughs> it's upset for me. Maybe next Does time, pee so on the hardwood a, floor next here's time. Here's a right. Here's a trivia question: Is yeah. the dog really upset for peeing on the floor? What's the dog acting that way for? Katie, no, the right? dog is upset because the owner's upset. Right. The dog has no remorse for peeing on the floor. Exactly. Floor. All right, here we go. Aww. Funniest. Video buddy, the long tongued pit. He's chilling. Oh, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. And he's dreaming. <laughs> and his <laughs> so eyes dreaming. are twitching and his tongue is hanging out. He's of his dreaming, mouth. so his paws are moving. Oh, no. No way. <laughs> no way. He's pulling his tongue out of his, his mouth. His dog's asleep and the owner's pulling the tongue out of his mouth and the dog is still asleep. No way. That dog's happy. That is hilarious. Oh my gosh! That, that, there's no way a dog would sleep through that. That's hilarious. Oh! <laughs> Still. You think that dog I had think some the dog's sedatives? got some, uh, maybe some, some brownies in it, maybe? Maybe. You think some, some brownies in it? That's hilarious. 
Happiness is trying. Trying. Learning to fly. Oh, learning to fly is taking longer taking than expected. Taking longer than expected. <laughs> Oh, That's pretty funny. Our dog does that. Dog's just trying to run up the. Just going the tree. after squirrels. I think she found herself there. Do you, She's got do a you shirt like over it? her head. Do you, do you like it on your face? <laughs> really? <laughs> Seems like you like it on your face. <laughs> I like this guy asking more than I like the dog. It reminds me of the one from last week where the guy was like, "Can we see a kid?" Oh, that was. I don't, I don't know if I can find. Oh, that's no! so funny. Eric would like that one. It's hilarious. Dawn. What, Watermelon Doggo. Right watermelon dog. Do you have a... Thank you. She's grabbing the watermelon very yeah. gently. Gently. She's taking a bite of the watermelon. Get it, girl. No health... Uh, are there cute. other health benefits of dogs eating uh, watermelons? Um, Nothing bad can happen from them. I what about does it have to be line, does it have to yeah. be seedless or can Does someone it say throw snow? <laughs> <laughs> he hates the cold, but will tolerate something. Oh my god, he's got booties on. He's got little booties <laughs> on, and he's doing backflips to try to catch the snow. That's pretty cute. I mean, I wouldn't call that a backflip. It's kind of a backflip. It's like yeah. a twist. It's yeah. like a hack twist. My dog is having a cute tantrum because I was giving my other pooch some snuggles. Are you having a tantrum? Please. She's trying to pet her dog, and the dog won't give her the time of day. Just looking away. Looking away. The cold shoulder. That is a definite cold shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, fine. I will let you pet me. Right. Our dogs don't do that. Nah. Wilfred could give no cares. Yeah. The only thing that he's here for is food. And then ever after that, then he just goes back to doing whatever he was going to do before. He's kind of like, you guys are here for... To keep me alive, and that's it. Like, yeah. Like, they go into the bathroom, maybe shine the light. He's like, for real? Like, what are you doing in here? All right, it's breakfast time. Why are you doing this, Seth? I'm trying to get your food ready as quick as I can. You're being really rude. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really shocked that you would talk to me like that. You're being really rude. That's what we'll do. That was just really rude. Oh. Yeah, hey, maybe maybe you shouldn't say? tell her how rude she's being in a cute voice. Though. Oh my <laughs> god! You're being I'm so trying. rude right now. Uh, Do they all eat out of the same bowl? That's, That's a, a big, ginormous big bowl. bowl of food. That was scaredy good dog. One. Instead of a scaredy cat, there's a cat's gonna pop out of here. Ah! Yeah! That's the not where I thought the cat was gonna come the out cat of. Was like, what's wrong? The cat was just like, I was just saying, what's up, buddy? Oh, I see the cat now. Ah! <laughs> the cat didn't even do anything. No, he just walked out. The cat literally just walked out, and the dog went running. I think that dog has some PTSD from from prior Prior. interactions with that cat. Dog washing. After a poo. Okay. We're doing thank you. I wish they could get all dogs to clean up. Oh my god. (laughs) Boom. Boom. Sausage. So, if anybody's watching this, that that deformity. We're doing thank you. There's a breakdown in cartilage and ligaments. The dog typically on. Boom. Boom. Sausage. Yeah, she stands weird. So I found. Oh, well, this is before the song. When the siren is broken. Finally, I'm home. I can just relax. Oh my god. What? No, we're not going for a car ride. No, you pooped. What? <laughs> Jerry, That's stop screaming. <laughs> stop screaming. Finally, I'm home. I can just relax. Oh my god. What? No, we're not going for a car ride. No, you pooped. All I'm saying is it's your fault for having a duck. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Jerry, stop screaming! Jerry? Jerry? Stop making such a mess! Stop! 
Oh my god, Jerry, get down! <laughs> Don't yell at me! Oh my god, Jerry. I cannot imagine what his house smells like. No. Oh. Stop making such a mess! Stop! Obviously, you don't see his wife in any. Oh my god, Jerry, get down! <laughs> don't yell at me! Oh gosh, that's funny. That's pretty funny. Stop yeah. eating the dirt! Look what you did to the garden, Jerry! Stop ripping up the garden! Back in the house, come on! No, you're gonna get killed by a hawk! Jerry, no, you're not a hawk! Hey, will you? No, get back in the house! Come on! What are you doing? No, oh my god. <laughs> That's pretty funny. He's got a okay, lot of stuff in there. Okay, one of the videos, funny videos that we watched last week was this cat that oh, was like, God. she was standing was on the edge of the pool, like trying to look into the water. Yeah, and fell in or what? And well, the owner was videotaping like it. Like in the screen porch, kind of. Like in the screen porch. Oh, area. yeah. And then <laughs> it reminded me of you because you sneezed so loud. And the dad, like, sneezed. Sneezed, right. And it scared the cat so much that the cat fell into the pool because he sneezed. <laughs> but the best part was. And the wife, what is, what's his name? I don't know what his name was, Don or something. Don. So she was like, Don! Don! Don. Not again, Don! Yeah, and, and then like, she, he goes, what, I can't sneeze what now? What, am I allowed to sneeze? <laughs> and like, the cat's just like... Oh, it was pool. so funny. What about, is that it? Jumps into like, oh no. Oh, it was like, Ron! That's right, it was Ron! Ron! That's so, I mean, her voice was like, it was just so funny. I don't know if I can find it. That was really funny. Yeah, you might not be able to find it. Yeah. No. Oh my gosh, you found it! You found it! Okay. No, it's a, it's a gift though. Yeah, it's not. Oh, oh bummer. That was That's it. it. Okay, well. Run! Run! <laughs> I wonder if I can pull up the... Oh my word, that poor cat. All right, well, let's jibber jabber while he's uh, talking about that. So, so um, um, any current events coming up? What are we doing? Oh, we're going on vacation next week. Oh, I am too. Where are you going? I'm going to Florida. Nice. On Tuesday. Are you going to Florida? Yes. He doesn't know. He's not old. He's not coming. Why? Why are we looking at me like that? Like I'm not supposed to say anything. Here we are. <laughs> are you okay? It's too late now. <laughs> the we are going. Are listening. Where are you going? We are going. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm. I should be involved in this joke, and I do not. I, I'm not it's involved not a in joke. this joke. Um, uh, all right, we're going to Arizona. Eric's gonna be 30 on Monday. That's awesome. Old man. Feels weird. Just kidding. <clears throat> uh, he's not an old man. Um, Eric's gonna be 30 on Monday, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go to Arizona and then San Diego. So Arizona is gonna be. We're gonna land. He's got the video. Monday. Oh my God! Here we go. Here we go. Make sure the sounds. Up. Oh yeah. This is uh. This is us watching it. This is hysterical. A okay, cat so is approaching a, yeah. a swimming pool. And her head's over the side. What? This is uh -oh. not going to... Oh! <laughs> Something scared her. <laughs> what did he say? Listen to the guy. Okay. <laughs> nice one, Ron. <laughs> that's why that's funny. <laughs> Nice one, Ron. <laughs> he sneezed. <laughs> yeah, he goes, oh my God, nice one, sneeze. Ron. What, I can't sneeze? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you and when I sneeze. You get so upset. Nice one, Ron. Oh my God, that was so funny. <laughs> it was just as funny the second time. Okay, in my defense, that's because every time Eric sneezes, he goes, woo! After like literally screams. That sounds like that's a, when he gets that's mad a, at me for yelling in cars, but I swear to Rick God, Flair. he puts up all the windows, sneezes, and then yells at the top of his lungs. That's not that's not true. First yes. of all, I don't roll up the windows to sneeze. I think you do. That's not true. Um, but then this is just a. He does. A, <laughs> this is just a, a, a PSA for all those that are watching slash listening. Um, if you don't sneeze loud, then you don't know what you're missing. Um, it feels way better what? when you sneeze loud. Okay, I'm trying it. We're so, I did it a few times here, and now I'm next. Misses. Next one, let her rip, man. Just go for it. I'll never understand the people that like hold it in. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's how you get an aneurysm. <laughs> I don't, and I, in no Why way am I any type of medical doctor, but don't hurt yourself. You know, sneeze loud. Sneeze loud. Sneeze loud. I just can't yeah. handle loud and proud. Woo! 
like right next to me. I mean, even and even hearing always, it from her makes me laugh. So. Sort of like he's doing something with his hand. I don't even know what it is. You're holding your nose or something, and you throw a leg up at the same time. Yeah. She sees and it's like woo. <laughs> See. Every, all that you're doing right now is describing it to people that want me to continue to do that. That's yes, all. Yes, yeah. exactly. Only because you get mad doesn't doesn't mean that <sighs> we shouldn't do it. No, oh my God. It's only slightly frustrating. Only slightly. All right. Are well, we closing off? We're closing out. That's it. Cool. Thanks for having all me. All right. Thanks, Eric, Thanks for, for being us. here. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being an awesome husband. first guest. First guest. Yay. Done. Awesome job. Thanks. Thank you. This has been another episode of the All Star Podcast. Thanks for joining. What? Okay. <laughs> All right, you can find us on iTunes and Spotify, Google and Spotify, iTunes, yep. something Facebook, else. Facebook, and send YouTube's. us your questions. Send um, us your questions. ASVC podcast at gmail dot com. Gmail dot com. Yep. And send us your questions. I'm Just Dr. Center. King, and I'm Katie Ray, and this is Eric with a K. I wanted you guys to do it. Why didn't you say your own name? Uh, Because I knew one of you would. And we will see you next time. Next time. Bye. Bye.